Yeah, when I met Isaac, you know, it was it was crazy. Uh, he's like five foot eleven and a half, big giant curly afro, big old glasses. Uh, you know, listen to sad boy music all the time, and it was it was crazy because inside him I saw an artist. Inside him I saw this this um, new self ready to burst out of this cocoon. And it, once he realized that for himself, you know, he became who we have today, Icky Ike. My name is Isaac Newby. I am the rapper known as Icky Ike, and I am from East Peoria, Illinois. I started off being a rapper by uh, mainly just writing poetry in high school, and I thought that was pretty cool. And then my youth pastor was like, hey yo, you got some talent writing bars, kid. So then he got me up in a studio, and we wrote my first song, Exhale, together. Growing up, um, I was influenced a lot of by Eminem. Um, I know that's very generic, but that's just like the main one anybody even cared about at the time. But when I started getting into poetry, it was a rapper that goes by the name of George Watsky. He got his start by doing um, slam poetry and then moved into rap. And I, I really connected with that because I, you know, I started out doing poetry before I ever did any rap. And even though, you know, poetry was just something that I just did in like study hall, it, it still feel like it was a huge part of me. And to, to look at one of my favorite artists and see that's how they got started as well, it, it, it's kind of like mind bending almost. And it's like, wow, I've actually been there. Whereas, you know, you look at some artists and you're like, I could never relate with that. Um, you know, some people just get their start because they just had a lot of money growing up or they, were just naturally super talented from the get-go, you know, like to get here, I had to get here. I had to work for it. A lot of my friends who are also involved in music, they also been very helpful to me. Um, I love input from them because everyone in my group has such a different opinion on music. And so when you get, you get one of my crazier friends who just, you know, loves Kanye West or something like that, uh, you know, their, their idea of what a good sound is is going to be a lot different than, you know, one of my friends who's an actual producer of music. And it, it's, it's cool to have that kind of group and to be able to mold my music around what so many other opinions were. I think we're, we're big motivators for each other uh, because we both see ourselves kind of in the same light. Uh, and in the same position, I think that it just kind of one of us uh, making strides towards a new goal will help the other uh, follow. Uh, sometimes it's me coming over to Isaac's house, getting him off of his bed and telling him to get over and write so we can get a new song out. Sometimes it's Isaac saying, hey, Chase, I think that, you know, you would be able to make one of these really well, so you should definitely try that. I say, okay, sounds good. And uh, we kind of just keep building up on each other and. One of the main influencers in my life um, is my previous youth pastor, and now one of my best friends. Um, he has definitely been, he was like a father figure for me. Um, pushed me to be a better version of myself, you know, in like the darkest time ever. And then brought me up here, and now he is one of the people that, you know, he keeps me pushing when I'm like, I just want to give up on everything. and throw everything I've ever done with music away. He's very like, let's think this through, you know. Um, I don't know where I'd be without him. I'm Dan Burkle, better known as D Breezy. Uh, I am the president and CEO of Summit Records. You know, I've been, uh, been running Summit Records now for a little over a year and a half. We got some really good artists on the label. Um, you know, this wasn't what I thought I'd be doing. You know, I, I, I was on stage, that was me. I was. I was living the dream, signed to another label, um, but then my heart was to take these other young budding artists and give them the opportunity that took me so long to get, and that's what brought me to where I'm at today, and that's what brought me to Isaac. You know, I've worked with a lot of artists in the studio. It's been, uh, it's been awesome for me to have the opportunity and the ability to meet so many different people. You know, to meet Andy Minio and be able to work with people like Chase Colum and, and, and Jay Royal. You know, we've had the opportunity to work with people like uh, Marty Marr. And it's really cool because Isaac brings some of that same flavor that these guys bring, some of these big cats bring, 
but in, in, in a more humble package, you know? So it's been good to see someone willing to learn and listen and grow, but to come in with just raw talent and, and blow everybody away. It's always funny when we have, you know, um, new cats in the studio who see Isaac for the first time just lay down a track. Uh, we call him that one hit wonder, the one take wonder. You know, he gets there, he gets in that mic, and he delivers everything he's got, lays it all out there. Um, and that's something rare. That's something rare in the industry. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I feel very um, indifferent about my album right now. Uh, it was one of those things where when we started working on it, it was like a fever dream, and it felt like something I was never going to do. And then we started working on it, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is what goes into making music, and it's it's absolutely insane. It's definitely, it's definitely something I want to do for the rest of my life. But oh my goodness, it is something you you don't expect. Um, the amount of time, and money, and effort that goes into it is insane. And you know, if it weren't for amazing people to have on this team it definitely would be a lot more difficult. You know, it's crazy. I remember back in, a, back in when I was coming up, before I ever got a deal, it, trying to get a record deal was ridiculously hard. You had to be in the right place at the right time. An AR rep needed to hear you. Someone needed to find you out. Like there needed to be a physical body in the room. Uh, or just insane word of mouth for you to ever get touched and it's just crazy now you got cats who are, are, are YouTube and, and SoundCloud phenomena that blow up overnight and get signed to these deals because they went viral on the internet like the internet has changed um, what it takes to be to, to be signed it, it's changed it's changed a process culture has changed what it takes to be signed I know I remember we're coming up too, like if you didn't have all your ducks in a row, if it wasn't perfection at its best, I mean, you weren't being touched because the music was just different then. There was technique, there was, there was, um, you know, a message and a purpose to everything people put out. And then you get music today is just different. It doesn't take that. You know, there's club songs that don't say nothing. There's just a lot of, I mean, you got mumble rap, you got these things, these, these phenomena that's come out of nowhere that while, don't get me wrong, I can sit and bump to the best of them. But I couldn't tell you a darn thing designer is saying um, at all, you know. So I think it's easier to get signed and get noticed now. But I think because of that, once you get signed and once you have a deal, it's harder to stand out. You've got to really raise the bar because there's so many people who are getting these uh, deals. So many people who are getting these mini deals with indie labels too. Like there's just a lot of people on the market. So you've got to raise your bar so you don't just get stuck, um, just being another face in a crowd. You know, anyone who's met Isaac can tell you that <laughs> for good or for bad, he's full of emotion. Um, I think what makes a standout artist and what makes Isaac so real is that he puts everything he has into his music, every emotion, whether it be emotion, us as the, uh, the labels sanctions or not, you know, um, he's gonna put it on paper because that's who he is, you know, and I think that's what makes an artist. When you can take what you feel inside and make other people feel that, whether they want to or not, like, that's an artist. That's talent. When you can take what you see in your head and make someone else see that picture without ever showing it to them, just verbalizing, that's an artist. And Isaac has that. Very few artists you can get in a room with and they can tell you exactly what they want without having any context to put it in. Like he can tell you, I want a beat. I want doom, doom, ta, ta, doom, ta, doom, doom, ta. And, and then you put it on, he's like, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's what I want, that's what I want. And you, he'll just build that track right there. You know, we have some of the greatest producers um, on Summit. You know, we have Chase Calvin um, right now, an, an up and comer, a young kid, doing some really awesome stuff in the studio, but him and Isaac work so great together. You know, Isaac can verbalize. I think a lot of being an artist, and succeeding in, in being an artist is being able to verbalize what you want, what you need, and what you feel. And those three things, Isaac does flawless. With technology evolving over time, music videos have become a lot more popular.
with what started as an artist just standing in front of a camera singing a song to it has now become stories that are like mini movies. The popularity of a song can nowadays be greatly affected by the quality of a music video. Back in my day, I'm going to date myself right here. You know, MTV, um, the, the music television network, if you were unaware, had this thing called TRL, Total Request Live. You know, and every week, teenagers all over would go sit on their couch so they could watch the top 10 music videos in the nation. You know, music videos is what set people like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Korn and all these guys these to epic proportion because they were putting out awesome content that visually we could relate to um, and they were visually stunning uh, in correlation with the songs they were doing. It was just awesome. And I think that's, that's continued into to modern music today. You know, we have these artists who are actually self-producing a lot of their albums who can now self-produce a lot of their videos. So the market is just saturated with awesome, awesome content. I think now if a song doesn't have a video, it makes it less relevant. I think right now that you're not serious about it if you haven't put the time to put the content behind it, you know, because it is readily accessible. Any Joe Schmo with a cell phone now can make a music video. I mean, they don't have $3,000 of camera equipment like we do sitting here in front of me. You know, it's, uh, it's just about buying into your own craft. I think that's part of what the music video um, phenomena is about, just proving that you invest in yourself so others will invest in you too. Music videos play a huge role in the music industry. Um, if you're a singer or a writer who has trouble visualizing yourself, or if you're someone listening who has problem visualizing, to have somebody, you know, make an entire video out of that, it definitely helps. Um, you know, in in a song like Exhale, where I'm talking about just letting everything out. Some people are going to have a lot of trouble visualizing what that's like. So having a music video like that where it's it's me letting all of my emotions out and everything that I feel, a music video like that's going to help people understand, okay, this is a very serious subject for him, you know. He's he's going through things that he's not he's not able to just talk it through with anybody, you know. He's it's just him and letting it all out. So it's funny, we were, we're working on this uh, album Homecoming with Isaac, and uh, we're, right now we're shooting like this whole mini movie, um, seven different music videos. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm loving what, what we're getting um, you know, in, in production. But how it started was crazy. You know, We sit here, we sit around, we just joke. The crew spends a lot of time together. A lot of the guys on Summit spend a lot of time together. And we're sitting in the basement one day and just playing with the track, you know, we're just, you know, in the lab just hitting sliders and faders and just goofing off and uh, Logic has a little sample in there of a car and you know we were getting to the end of Exhale his first single off the track and I threw that car sound on there and it was like cold chills running down our spine it was just it opened our eyes to something we realized there is so much drama in this song there's so much feeling and emotion in this song that we could convey even more with a video. So we took that and we meshed it together with the next song on the track and how beautifully they fit. And we were like, we should make a video tying these two together. But when you get to know the guys that I work with, one is never enough. We couldn't just do a one-off video. That turned into this complete universe that we now operate in, um, the Spider Ick Chronicles. Um, you know, we have this giant universe that we operate in where his music videos tie into mine, tie into Chase's. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful how this is all working out, but it all started with just a simple loop on a track and uh, spawned probably one of the, in my opinion, coolest things to come out of Summit, Summit Records and uh, to date. So be watching out. Homecoming 2019. It's going to be a hoot.
when we first started working on the music videos, there was a lot of planning that we had to do for them, for it to work out. My first initial thought was that it would only take us about a week, but as we got more into the planning process, it seemed that that was not the case. A lot of the filming took place during spring break because that was the time that we were all free to do so. It was roughly 13 to 16 hours a day with I think only one off day, which was on like the Saturday. But with all that work, the outcome is definitely worth it. Some shots were a lot harder than others and that required us to do a lot more planning. As an example, one of the music videos is called Monster. Uh, that music video was filmed at an abandoned place. That takes a lot of planning because we have to get permission. So um, Dan actually called multiple people that were potential owners of the place, uh, which we did not find the actual owner. So we called the East Peoria Police Department. Um, they gave us permission. So we're good to go in there. And the second problem was that there's no electricity, but we needed our lights. So uh, we brought these battery boxes that were like huge. And we powered them off um, the cars uh, to actually get light in that place. If you film a lot, it can be very stressful, but it definitely helps that our crew consists of a friend group. So during down times when we're filming, we can still goof around, which makes it fun. Hello MTV, welcome to my crib. So far we have well over like 200 hours of footage. Um, and we're still not even halfway done. I think we have two songs finished as far as editing goes so far, with the intro and the transitions in between the songs, but I um, still have five to go. With the amount of work that we have left to do still, we, we may tend to get unmotivated, but actually we are more motivated to finish that work. Because after putting so much time into it, you become passionate about the work that you're doing. and. We're really just excited to see the results and the finished product of what we are doing. I think at this point, people should be hyped for my album because it's been so long. <laughs> um, it's, it's been almost a year and a half of working on it and there have been so many um, redos, um, songs we've trashed, songs we've brought back. It, it's been a roller coaster of well, what should we actually put on this album? As an artist, you really gotta get yourself out there. You can't just sit in your room um, recording a song and just throwing it up and never talking about it, you know? Um, there's a reason people like Eminem are so popular or Billie Eilish, you know, they're all over the place. You see them everywhere you go. Um, and social media is a huge thing with that. Um, as much as social media can destroy a career, it can build one. You know, you you get up on Instagram or Facebook or something like that, and you you talk about yourself, and you fill all these people in on who you are and what you do, and you're constantly updating them. Um, one of my own faults is I don't update my fan base enough, um, and that would definitely it would build it and it would make it more of a family than just a fan base. Um, that's one of the other things about social media with artists and uh, popular creators. If they treat their fan base like a family, social media is a way to connect with them like that, you know. Even if it's just like a picture a day, if you're just like, hey, I'm doing great, um, I'm working on something, you know. Something like that, it can make them, it, it can make that, that level of intimacy feel so much stronger than just, I'm listening to this guy on YouTube and that's it.
got some fries or something? Yeah, hold up. Pretty hungry. <laughs>